Hey everybody, me again. I know, right? Two videos in a row. I'm, I'm, I'll stop this soon. I promise. Uh, but today, sorry, I had to move something. I want to teach you guys how to put models of your own creation through Hero Forge into tabletop. So I made this video a long time ago, but it was kind of bad because back then you had to use GIMP and you had to go create, you had to get an STL file from Hero Forge. Then you had to edit the the file in GIMP, and then you could have it. So I've got these files. These are not files, but these models. These are the ones back when Hero Forge didn't have like the actual tabletop ready system that it has now. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows that it's way better now than what it was. You don't. It's a lot less work and a lot more probably worth the, the money cost, honestly. So this is how they this is how they used to look. And this is how the newer ones look. All these were made through Hero Forge. Most of these are just uh, players. Like uh, all of these would be players, but I actually made these. Uh, you can actually subscribe now to Hero Forge, not sponsored. You can subscribe to Hero Forge, and you will. You they give you, I think it's seven free um, models, um, like like tabletop model minis. You get seven free a month, and it just stacks over time, and it never it'll never like reset or refresh on you. I think I have like. 27 in the back right now but i like for a dm this is amazing you can create all of your own models and you're paying like ten dollars a month or however much it was i think it was 15 uh, don't don't quote me on that it's the typical subscription payment fee i don't know 10 anywhere between 10 to 15 bucks a month <laughs> and you get these amazing models that you can do your players like an undead priestess or whatever the fuck i made her look like or this big ass barbarian bit i love her i love her so much by the way I really hope my players don't kill her. They probably will, but I hope they don't. She came out really looking really well. So to the point to where I did this, and this is a really cool trick too, um, because you're in tabletop, you can make multiple models of the same person. So, you know, here's one with her weapons on her back, and then here's one with her weapons drawn out. And you can even go a step further with that. And if you go here and go down to where it says create states, make sure, so you hover over both, and then whichever one you want to be the, the main one, the first, you would right click that one and then go to create states. And what that does is now you can switch between the two different states. And it's a really neat trick because now you can kind of like in the middle of combat where the figure is still on there, you can switch it to, to like to the actual combat one. Uh, one of the players of my table actually has done this for a couple of them. So this is actually not the first model he made for this campaign we're in right now. He also, I think this one, yeah, this is the first model he made because he was found on the beach. So, as you can see, he's come a bit of a long way from there. But I like it. It shows progression. How cool is that? Look. So now this is what he currently looks like, because now he has armor, he has a sword, he has a real shield. He's not using, like, whatever the hell he was using. And this one's even better. He has a horse. Because he's a paladin, he can summon his own horse. So he had a model made with his horse. So he has a model of him riding his horse. And he also made a model of just the horse. So when he's not on the horse. Yeah. But you can, the, the things you can do with this, the, the amount of creativity with this is amazing. And I really, I really wish, really hope Hero Forge um, continues to push on this and make it a better system. There's still probably a couple problems with it. The price, for one, most people probably won't, don't want to pay that much for a one-time mini. I think the subscription's worth, but I don't think the single-time payment uh, price is worth. Speaking of, let's go ahead and get on that, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the curtain back a little bit. My bad. We're going to take a little memory lane down to Hero Forge real quick and hopefully not show any of my account information so you guys don't steal things from me. But you know, it is what it is. Speaking of account, let's do here. So this is how it would look when you go to Hero Forge. When you first load up Hero Forge, you're going to see this. You're going to just see like a blank character. You're not going to have anything else. And then from here, you'll just make your character. Now, I'm not going to go through the effort of making a character on here because that would literally just make this video longer than it doesn't need to be. You don't need to know how to do this. You know how to do this. Um, but when you finish with it, come down here to buy, scroll down on all the way down to this side, and you'll see where it says 3D Digital. And this is Tabletop. It even says it right here, Berserk Gamer Tabletop Simulator. And it's 799, which I think is a lot for a single model. 
for just a, a little file of it. But it is what it is. So you'll buy it using whatever method of payment you want to use. They take PayPal, I think. I think you can also do it through Amazon Prime now. Um, and then you would go to your digital downloads. And this is where it'll pop up at. As you can see, I've done a lot of um, models. But this is where it will uh, pop up at when it's ready. And then you will click download. And I'm not going to click download again, but you know you can click download. It'll end up in your downloads. And go to documents, D&D. &D. So wherever it ends up at, which for you would be your downloads. For me, it's here. And I, because I create a file for it just for all my little ones. You'll see the difference. See, these are the old ones where they're STL files. And, I, and they need to be converted over. While the newer ones are just ready for tabletop. So now to put them into tabletop, you will go to objects, components, custom, asset bundle, not model. I know, right? You would think model, mm -mm, asset bundle. Um, and then it's going to give you a prompt. And then this is simple. You just, you know, find it. If I can find it, uh, we'll do this one. Cloud upload import. Now, sometimes when they, when you do this, like this one worked out perfect for the first time in one of my videos, something actually worked when I did it. Um, but sometimes when you do this, they could fall to the floor and they'll just vanish and they won't spawn in like most things do, like, because they're not technically falling. They fell and they, they're caught on something. Um, I don't know if it's just my table in particular that does this. I think they fall and they stick down here is what happens for me. Um, so for you, it might, if you're using a different table, it might just fall right through. But if they do stick into the table, you can just do a big old hover like this and they'll be somewhere in there and you can pick them up that way. And once you pick them up once, they won't fall through the floor anymore. Everything will work out. Uh, another thing I want to point out, something that's easy to do in, uh, in Hero Forge, if you haven't noticed the difference between these guys, is I, I swear, I know I did it. I know I did it on, the, on all three of these when I was doing it. The, uh, the, but the bottom didn't get painted. What I'm thinking is happening is in Hero Forge, when you're creating it, if you are focused too much on... Try, uh, for me, when I'm making a lot of my models for my NPCs, I'm making, I'm making stages. I'm making a bunch of states to them. Most of my models have a couple of different states to them. I think I forgot. I did it on one, but I didn't do it on the other. So I just, just word to the wise, if you're doing that, just make sure you pay attention to make sure every model has the same treatment as each one. If you are doing different state models, because that does make it kind of awkward when uh, something like this happens. If it'll even come in. Huh. Oh, that's right, because I deleted it. No, that's fine. That's supposed to go that way. Okay, that don't play no mind to that. <laughs> uh, here we go. This one worked. But you see, this one I actually have the base for. And then the second one doesn't have it. So just something to look out for when doing that kind of stuff. I want, oh, it's loading. That's why. Yeah, there it goes. He uses these pretty cool, I don't know, whip kunai things. It's probably a name for them. They look dope. That's all that matters to me. I'll make up a name. They'll be called something different in my world. <laughs> um, I think that's it. This video is going to be short. A lot of the videos are going to be short. All of them are just going to be me updating previous videos. So this whole week's going to be just a bunch of short videos until we get to like Saturday, Sunday is where I'm going to probably do the part one and part two on the fog of war. I'm going to do the part one, which will be the remake of my fog of war video basically, or I don't think I did a personal fog of war video, but I'm going to redo and re say everything I've done and teach you guys how to use both different types of fog of war. Cause there's two different types and both have their purposes in, in tabletop for different reasons. Um, and then the part two will be, I'll be at showing you how to do field of vision and whether or not, and then I'm going to show you all the steps of how to do it. And then you can decide whether or not you need to do it. I don't even do it in my campaign. It's just not, a, it's too much work for what it is, but if it's something that you feel your campaign needs or you and your players really want, then I want to make sure you know how to do it. I think that's it. Um, thanks for everything. Appreciate the guy, the words, nice words you guys said uh, yesterday about the video. Um, I really hope I can keep making videos. If you have any ideas of what you want me to make, please send them my way because there's a certain point where I don't really know what else to tell you about. It's, it's not rocket science. It's tabletop simulator. So, but um, 
yeah, I'll uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.